Everyone is in health and safety protocols. The world is crumbling down as we know it. The Thunder play four games this week and will be very, very shorthanded. We're going to cover all of this and preview tonight's Kings game, as well as celebrate SGA, who won Western Conference Player of the Week, all on today's Locked on Thunder podcast on the Locked on Thunder podcast and Locked on Podcast Network, your teams every day. Your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast. On the Locked On Podcast Network. Your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, brought to you by Truebill. We will dive into the Oklahoma City Thunder dealing with their first COVID outbreak, the roster moves that has been made since then, what's going to happen with the Thunder this week as they play four games and have a back to back starting tonight against the Kings. Preview that Kings game and, of course, celebrate SGA, who was able to take home. Western Conference Player of the Week honors. Today's show, again, is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill uh, is an app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you do not want or need anymore. And it can even negotiate better deals for the ones you want to keep. Now, let's get into the Thunder roster being in flux. The fact that uh, there are a ton of players now in health and safety protocols and what that means for this organization. So, it started out with on Sunday, remember, whenever the Thunder uh, played their game Sunday and, and had Darius Baisley and Trey Mann out for COVID protocols. And then it started to kind of unfold from there as Pokashevsky enters protocols, as Josh Skiddy and Derek Favors enter protocols, as well as Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Briefly, Aaron Wiggins was in there, but it was a false positive, so he's okay, he's good to go, and he will play tonight and be active tonight for the Thunder. However, it did not stop at those six players, Baisley, Mann, Poku, Giddy, uh, Favors, Jerry. It went on to their head coach, Mark Dagnall, who missed uh, the stretch of games, obviously. It'll be his second time uh, missing games this season. Of course, the first was due to uh, the birth of his child. Now, the Thunder promote Mike Wilkes, who, of course, played for the Thunder uh, back in about 2009, 2010, and played about four games for them, three games for them uh, in that season. He's been an assistant coach with Mark, and so he understands the program. But the reason why the Thunder are changing this up now, remember, whenever Mark entered pro, uh, whenever Mark left the team to be with his child, the birth of his child in the beginning of the season, whenever they went to Milwaukee and went to Atlanta and had that East Coast road swing, whenever that happened, Dave Bliss was the acting head coach. Well, the reason why this time it's Mike Wilkes and not Dave Bliss is because Dave Bliss is in health and safety protocols. So that takes away two of the Thunder uh, coaching staff members, one being the most prominent head coach and also uh, what appears to be the top assistant coach with Dave Bliss. And now it's important to note that there's been reports from Bleacher Report that teams have started evaluating the, the option of calling up G League coaches. The G League right now has put their season on pause. So the G League, remember, had their uh, start of the season kind of in a weird step, but they, they've never done this before. So the, this first part of the G League season, the reason why it was so sporadic and spread out was because it was part of what's called the G League Showcase. And so the first two months, remember, it felt like the Thunder, or the Blue, I should say, were playing two games every two weeks. Like It felt like it was just so uh, sporadic. That was the pool play for the Showcase. And then four or so teams that were picked to play in the tournament in Vegas, and the Thunder actually went all the way to the championship game for the Oklahoma City Blue, the Thunder's G League affiliate. They went to the championship game and lost in the Showcase championship game in Vegas. Now, after that day, given the circumstances of COVID in general, and also the fact that every NBA team is having to dip into the G League to take out players to put them on these 10-day deals, the G League has paused their season. So the G League is no longer active right now. And so teams are evaluating, hey, as we're missing these coaches, why not also pull up coaches from the G League staff that, that we own with our affiliation and bring them up here to help us out in the meantime? And for the Thunder... That would be very valuable if the NBA allows that to happen, and that actually does go through because the Thunder and the Blue run the exact same same stuff. 
They use the same verbiage. They are pretty much one team. A lot of teams disassociate themselves from their G League program or don't invest in their G League program as much as the Thunder do. The Thunder are of that rare caliber breed, like the Toronto Raptors, like a few other teams who truly care and truly invest in the G League. And so we'll see how long these coaches are out for. We'll see how long these players are out for and what happens from there. But that's the COVID outbreak. Now, the NBA, as recently as yesterday, changed the COVID protocols again. And this can change many a times before you even hear this podcast. So what's happening now is vaccinated and asymptomatic players can be out of these protocols in six days. Well, Sam Presti told us in media days before the year started that every player on this roster has been vaccinated. Now, we only know about one player's symptoms, and that was Trey Mann. Because remember, on Sunday, Trey Mann was tested in the morning. He was negative. And then throughout the day, he talked to the staff about the symptoms he had and that he didn't really feel too well. And so he goes to the layup line as they retest him and wait for the results. They get the results back, pull him off the floor, and he is in health and safety protocols. You can try to read between the lines there, but it seems like he is a positive test and symptomatic. So these new six-day protocols likely will not apply to Trey Mann, though that's just speculation. We don't really know anything just yet, but we'll see how this all unfolds. So the earliest these guys can get back now is those six days because they are all vaccinated. Now, who knows if they have booster shots? Uh, who knows if they're even eligible for booster shots? If you got your sh your COVID shots late, uh, of course, you're not ready yet on that timeline that they have you wait, I believe it's six months from your second dosage. So there's a lot still in the air. We don't really know all too much. So I'm just going to talk about what we do know, which is these players are out uh, for X amount of time. And what was the course of action for the Thunder after that? The Thunder, of course, though, by league rules, had to sign some hardship players to 10-day contracts. It's important to note that these 10 days are different than the 10 days you're used to. Usually, whenever a player signs a 10-day contract, they can only sign two 10 days, and then the team has to make a decision, either release them uh, out back to being a free agent or back to the G League, or sign them to a regular NBA deal. However, this year, you can sign players to as many two-way deals as you want to. Of course, both parties have to consent, so the player has to sign as well. But if, the, if both the team and the players agree, they can sign as many two-way deals as they want to this season with that organization. So that helps a ton as we see this effect of COVID run through the thunders. It started on Sunday with two players, and now we're all the way up to six uh, here on whatever day this is, Tuesday. So it's happening very rapidly, very quickly after the Thunder had zero COVID uh, protocols this season uh, to this point. And last year had very few. I remember one time Tim Allen went in there and I think that was because of his travel. And I remember one time I think Baisley was in there for a second, but I'm not too sure on that. But last year it was also very, very slim. And this year it's been an avalanche. In two days you've seen you lose your head coach and a lot of prominent players on your roster. So how did the Thunder react to that. Of course, the league makes you sign these hardship players. So now the Thunder have 13 active players tonight against Sacramento. This is not the best week for the Thunder to have this outbreak because they are playing a lot of games this week. They have a game today, they have a game tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday. So they're going to be on the road today and tomorrow in Sacramento and Phoenix. And then Friday for New Year's Eve, they're going to have their traditional home game on New Year's Eve against the New York Knicks. And then Sunday, they take on the Dallas Mavericks. So for sure, these players miss a lot of games in this week, right? There's some weeks where the Thunder only played two times, three times a week. So it's just a, it's just a week of a heavy workload that you would not typically want to have this happen. Of course, you never want this to happen, but especially a week where you're playing a lot of games and especially for a team that's playing their best basketball of the season right now. I mean, they're playing really good ball. Last week, they went three and one uh, and, and they're having a good 10, a 10 game stretch here of good basketball. So we'll see how the Thunder can react and kind of rally around that. They do have their most important player of SGA. They do have Lou Dort still, but missing Josh Giddy is huge. Missing Derek Favors is huge. Missing JRE is huge. Those are uh, starters in, in your rotation uh, that you typically play. Trey Mann is coming to his own. Darius Baisley finally kind of found that role where he was being comfortable and looking confident and playing well in off the bench. And of course, Pogoshevsky is a fan favorite. Everyone wants to watch him play all the time. Uh, but luckily, Aaron Wiggins had a breakout game Sunday against the Pelicans. Uh, it was a false positive, and he's good to go. But, of course, it does not stop there with the COVID. The Thunder are also without Vic Critchie, who is out due to a sprained ankle. So if you're wondering this whole time, hey, you know, we're seeing these players going to the protocols left and right. Why aren't the Thunder calling up Vic Critchie? Well, during that championship game for the Blue in the G League Showcase Cup thing in Vegas, he sprained his right ankle. 
So he's a sprained ankle, and they're not going to call him up because he's hurt. So it's now a ton of players you're missing, plus your head coach, plus one of your top assistant coaches, who this organization trusted to lead the team for, I believe it was three or four games, whenever Mark was away uh, for the birth of his child. So a lot up in the air still for the Thunder, who have so far signed three, but this was, of course, from last night, whenever at the time uh, Josh Giddy was not in there and Derek Favors was not in there. So we'll see them probably likely sign another player to a 10-day deal between now and tomorrow. That's just a guess, but you'd imagine missing those two players uh, sparks that outcome. But they did sign three from the Oklahoma City Blue, so they did not go too far outside of their organization to get these players. And that's a good thing, I think. That's a good thing for the Thunder because, again, the Thunder and Blue run the exact same stuff, use the exact same terminologies, and kind of operate as one entity. And so it makes this transition easier than some other teams, not, not just in travel-wise because they are up the road in Edmond, but uh, in, in all those other aspects on the floor as well. We'll talk about what this means. We'll talk about if these 10-day players even have a shot to stick around and so much more coming up. But first, I got to say right now, but a good friends over at Truebill. Truebill is incredible because did you know that free trials renew without your consent because businesses want to scam you out of money. So do not let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you do not need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 per year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your account and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there for you whenever you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions. So you do not have to. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped them save over $100 million. We've all been there, folks. We've all signed up for a free trial of something, especially around the holiday season as, as these entities give away uh, their product for free uh, for a couple of weeks. And we say, hey, you know what, I'd like to try that. And then you just simply forget you even gave them your credit card number. And now they're charging your account over and over and over again. So do not fall for those scams ever again. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. That is Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. And it can save you thousands of dollars per year. We are back on Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Roland Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com, and follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. A lot to get to today for the Thunder, especially as they change their roster over a bit. But I want to thank you right now for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. For your next listen, Check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. Listen to Locked On Now podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or even just watch it on the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. It's a great way to understand each game from the night before in the association. As we all know, we cannot possibly get to each and every game, especially while keeping up with the Thunder. But our local experts have you covered in that area, so make sure you go check it out, uh, the Locked On Now podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast. And the Thunder do sign three players to hardship ex exception 10-day deals. And then, of course, they're all three from the Oklahoma City Blue. It stars with Oli Olivier Saar, who went to Kentucky and played against Trey Mann whenever Trey Mann was at Florida. Uh, he's 22 years old. He is a lengthy, lanky seven-footer, 237. Uh, in college, he averaged double-digit points his junior year and his senior year. His junior year, whenever he was at Wake Forest, he averaged 13 points, nine rebounds, an assist, and a block per game. His senior year at Kentucky, he averaged 10 points, five rebounds, an assist, half a steal, a block, and 44% from three on one attempt per game. So he had a nice college career. In the G League, he's played 14 games, seven points for the blue per game, four rebounds, an assist, half a block, 17% from three. Not exactly a stretch five that is SAR. But interesting nonetheless, he was obviously with the Thunder in training camp. That's how they retained his G League rights. But the Thunder do kind of are interested in him, and he's now going to be thrust into a situation where a team that already lacks size, already lacks bigs, is now down Darius, is not on Darius Baisley, Derek Favors, and GRE. So he's going to probably get a lot of action right off the gate, right out of the gate against Sacramento tonight. So we'll see how he can perform and how he can do. Of course, the Thunder also signed Rob Edwards 
who's already a fan favorite due to his years with the with the blue and his summer league standouts. He played college ball at Arizona State with Lou Dort. Uh, he's a sharpshooter who's not shooting as well as he was last year. Uh, last year in the bubble, he was fantastic, shooting 44% from three. This year, he's shooting 33% outside that bubble uh, atmosphere, and we've seen that happen across basketball. The, of course, the G League last year played in the same bubble that the NBA did in, in, the, in the Disney World bubble for that season. And we saw a few players who shot better in that bubble environment with those different sight lines than they did whenever they're in kind of gyms that have fans and gyms that have different depth perceptions for shooting the basketball. 12 points per game, three rebounds per game, two assists, half a steal per game. And again, shooting 33% so far this year is Rob Edwards. And again, a lot of fans already love Rob Edwards. Scotty Hobson was the third player and one of these is not like the other. Of course, Rob Edwards, fresh out of college, played with Lou Dorton College. He's a, he's a 20-something-year-old kid. And, of course, Saar, 22 years old, is a big man. Scotty Hobson, though, was playing at the University of Tennessee when I was in elementary school. I loved watching Scotty Hobson play at Tennessee. I have his Tennessee jersey, his Tennessee basketball jersey with the American flag on it. It was awesome. Uh, I loved watching Scotty Hobson play. And he's been with the Thunder organization for years uh, and also has played a ton of basketball overseas as well. He spent four years in the G League, and again, that does not even account for his overseas basketball. He's 6'7", 204, 32 years old. He played 11 games during this showcase period. He's played four NBA games in his career, last playing with Dallas in, I believe, 2017 for one game. Uh, six points per game, two rebounds per game, an assist, and 14% shooting from three in the showcase period for the Oklahoma City Blue. Now, he's been with the Blue for a long time uh, and has been in many a training camp for the Thunder uh, in his NBA career, but why? Why pick Scotty Hobson, this 32-year-old, over a younger player who has more upside and who maybe can be a shot in the dark, right? Well, I think that this is actually a good signing by the Thunder. I do. Number one, you're picking a player who's played a ton of basketball and you understand he understands the game and understands how to give you reliable NBA quality minutes. Is he going to be a superstar? Is he even going to be a top bench player in the NBA? No, obviously not. But he is going to be dependable. And as your roster's in a lot of flux right now and you can lose players in warm lines as we've seen with Trey Mann on, sun on Sunday, you need as many players on this roster as you can get while balancing out upside uh, that can just play quality, competent NBA minutes and not be kind of overwhelmed. Uh, I don't know if Rob Edwards will be overwhelmed or not. I don't know if Olivier Saar will be overwhelmed or not. I do know that Scotty Hobson will not be overwhelmed. That's number one. But more importantly for the Thunder, as you talk about upside, you talk about um, you know going for somebody who can make an impact long-term, that description fits Scotty Hobson in a different way. Look, Saar and Edwards have a legitimate shot. If they can perform in these 10 days, and if they can even get another 10-day contract and perform, if they can perform on this stretch with the Thunder, they have a shot to be with the Thunder long-term for the rest of the season is what I mean by long-term because there's a lot of options to get them there. Number one, the Thunder signed Paul Watson Jr. to the, to the uh, two-way contract, and it did not make sense at the time, given his age. And now that they're not even playing him still, it doesn't make sense. And we'll see how much he plays now that these, this roster is overturned with COVID. But... That signing has never made any sense, has never been that upside swing that you always hear Sam Pressy talking about and that you always hear Thunder fans talking about. That signing made no sense to waste the two-way spot on somebody who's just not there upside-wise. So that's one option. The second option is Gabriel Deck. Same thing. I understand that Paul Watson Jr. is a nice sharpshooter that can play defense. I understand that Gabriel Deck's a throwback player that can play really quality minutes at any level of professional basketball. Overseas, Olympics, NBA, he's a very good basketball player. I also understand the Thunder are not playing those guys. They're not giving them minutes. They're not giving them opportunity. They're not giving them a chance. And so you can either release uh, Paul Watson Jr. and give them a two-way deal or trade slash release Gabriel Deck and slide Wiggins up to the NBA D NBA standard contract, and that's now opening a two-way spot for Saar or Edwards. So there's a legitimate path here for either of those two players to become NBA players for the rest of the season and, and possibly beyond. And so you want to give those players as many opportunities and resources as possible. 
These two players play different positions, so they're not really going to be butting heads in that way of being a competitor. And instead of bringing on another player who was going to be fighting for theirs, Scotty Hobson kind of knows what he is at this point. He knows that an NBA future long-term career is not in his cards. He's just there to be a professional. And so with the two guys who do have upside, the two guys who do have that chance to have a long-term NBA career still, and it shocked the world, right? You're giving them somebody to bridge that gap. Somebody who's been there, done that, and again, will not be overwhelmed by walking into the shiny NBA locker room. Will not be overwhelmed by walking onto an NBA hardware. Will not be overwhelmed by an arena full of people, right? You're giving them somebody who also they know. So instead of putting these two guys who feel like their life is on the line, think about this, folks. We always kind of disassociate that, that this is a career and a job. For Rob Edwards and Olivier Sar, it would be shocking if they didn't feel this way, that their livelihood, their careers, their everything, what they've worked so hard for in their entire life to get to this point, you have to put in countless hours in your entire life's history to get here. It would, they feel like everything's right in front of them and can be taken away in a moment. They need somebody to help them get from point A to point B. You do not want to just throw them in with a bunch of strangers and nobody really there to help them for these next 10 days. At least Scotty Hobson gives them a familiar face, a familiar voice, somebody who they trust and can depend on, uh, and somebody that they know. Instead of, all right, go, go, go for your dreams and don't mess up, and we'll see you in 10 days, right? We'll see you whenever it is that we see you. You have nobody there around you. You're in an unfamiliar place, unfamiliar locker room. You've got a mesh on the floor and off, you know, on the floor and off the floor with these brand new guys. They have somebody here who they trust and can bounce questions off of and ideas off of and uh, just break down film with and things that they are comfortable with. And so I think that it shows a lot of faith in, in Scotty Hobson as a player and as a mentor and as a leader and as somebody who can really help these young guys uh, become true NBA players because that's that's the shot you're taking. And I think that Saar and Edwards both have upside and both have a, limit, a, a legitimate chance to be one of the better players for the Thunder in terms of a better fit on the two-way than Paul Watson Jr., a better fit for this roster than Gabriel Deck, even if it's just for the remainder of this season and not anything past that. So we'll see what happens as they begin to play tonight against the Kings. But first, I want to say right now, but good friends over at betonline.ag. BetOnline is you covered for the holiday season as the college football playoffs go into the playoff season and the NFL season marches into the playoff season as well. And of course, the NBA rolls along. You can go to betonline.ag as they're your number one spot for betting action. But online.ag will give you 50% on your welcome bonus on your first deposit by using the code locked on. Locked on at betonline.ag will give you 50% on the welcome bonus on your first deposit from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite casino games. Do not wait. Take advantage of these amazing offers right now for the 2021 season. But online, your online sportbook experts, but online where the game starts. And again, 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. And I've used the code locked on. We are back on Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Thank you for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms, including the platform of YouTube. Now, let's continue with the show and celebrate the fact that SGA has won the Western Conference Player of the Week Award. It's his first ever player of the week. He joins KD, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Dennis Schroeder as players who have won this honor. Uh, it's the second Thunder Award this season because Josh Giddy won Rookie of the Month for the first month of the season. Uh, Kemba Walker won it in the Eastern Conference, so two Thunder uh, legends winning the Player of the Week honors this week. And, of course, in this week, the Thunder went 3-1, and one, and SGA put up 27.5 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, and 7 assists per game for SGA. Obviously, starting out, all-Star Week, where the voting opens on us on Christmas Day uh, with a bang for, for his buck, and hopefully he can become an All-Star this year for the first time in his career as well. Game overview for this game against the Kings. Of course, Baisley, Man, Poku, Giddy, Favors, Jerry, Vitt are all out. Mark is out, and Mike Wilkes will be in as head coach. The Kings were without Davion Mitchell, and Alex Lynn is questionable. Uh, for this game, I want to know who in the world starts. <laughs> I want to know how in the world they piece together a rotation, because do you pull Muscala and Hustle off the bench and put them in different roles? Or do you just say, hey, this is going to be a weird scenario. 
Uh, everyone's going to have to be adjusting and adapting. Let's keep as much things stable and steady as we can. And let's keep them in their roles that they're comfortable with. What do you do here? Do you start uh, Saar in this game? Do you start Edwards or Hobson and figure it out from there by keeping everyone else in their same role? And then does Gabriel Deck play? Does Paul Watson play? Like if they're not going to play in this game, if they're not going to play in this stretch of games, then what are we doing? Like, what are we doing here? Why are they even on the roster if they can't play in this scenario? And I just want to see if it'll be an unbelievable game for SGA. I think that SGA could could go off and be fantastic. He's always pretty good against these younger guards uh, like Fox, like Mitchell, like everyone else. He, he kind of seems as though he has an extra edge in those kind of games. Now the entire team depends on him and is counting on him. And of course, he's also vying for his first all-star bit. So this could be the makings of an incredibly great game for SGA. Or given the roster limitations around him, it could be a game where he's triple teamed all night and can't really get into a rhythm. And of course, Lou Dort looking for that efficiency to come back. Uh, and of course, seeing how the, the three 10 day deals actually perform. Bet of the day is OKC plus six. Thunder Moneyball pick is SGA, hopefully having that fantastic game uh, for the Thunder and willing them to a win for the sake of my bet. Let me know what you think on Twitter at Ryland underscore styles at R Y L A N underscore S-T-I-L-E-S. Follow the show on Twitter at L-O Thunderpod and email the show, L-O Thunderpod at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in tonight whenever we recap the Kings game. We're here for you every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball until tomorrow. Be good and be good to one another.